do you feel? I mean, <laughs> like I was almost crying in there. I was like laughing and just like, I just can't believe it, you know? Yeah. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> yeah. I love this boat, oh my God. <laughs> So showering on a boat is uh, is a different experience. Hot showering on yeah. a boat. Not in the cockpit, not with my bathing suit on, not with limited amount of water, not freezing my little butt off, Yeah. not feeling kind of weird like shaving my armpits in front of neighbors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, right. I might go back in. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, they finally turned the water on on the docks because it's basically springtime now, so there's no kind of danger of all the hoses um, freezing. So we filled up the tanks this morning and we were like, let's take hot showers. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get in there. Yeah. <laughs> get out of my way. Get, get I'm in going there. in. <laughs> so how's my towel look? <laughs> Looking good, bud. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not very good at doing this. Yeah. No, that's a really good <laughs> Is it pretty good? Wow, that was an amazing shower. It was so nice. <laughs> I think I'm gonna be significantly cleaner on this boat than on Atticus 1. Yeah. You know, now that we've got the fresh water system working, the propane's working, what is our plan with the boat, Desiree? Like, what the heck are we doing right now? Besides just right. lounging in luxury. <laughs> I know. As much as I'd love to just stay on this dock forever and just take like seven hot showers a day, I am getting the travel itch again. And I want to get back to Panama and pick up right up where we left off from. So what we're trying to do now is get the boat ready so we can go to North Carolina and that will kind of be our refit hub where we can transform this boat into a badass off-grid voyaging sailboat. We need to find a place that is going to be relatively affordable to stay for a couple months that's going to be okay with us doing a lot of loud, messy work to the boat and hopefully a place that has relatively affordable labor so that we can potentially speed up these projects by hiring some of the jobs out so that we don't get stuck doing boat projects for the next like two years. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking maybe Oriental North Carolina. Before we can get down to North Carolina, there's a handful of projects that are absolute high priority projects that we need to accomplish, that we need to do before I feel comfortable taking this boat offshore. After our sea trial, we found out that we had some issues with the, the transmission control lever. Something there isn't working right and it's hard to shift into gear. So we need to address that and we're gonna do that today. I'm gonna probably go take another shower, maybe two, yeah. uh, file my nails. <laughs> and then get to work. And then get to work. <laughs> like in your new engine compartment bud you know it's not as bad as i was fearing when uh -huh. we first looked at it um there was a wall right here on the aft part of the compartment so i removed that and now i can kind of sit here so right now i'm working on the transmission cables we realized during the survey that it's hard to get the transmission into neutral. So when you go forward with the lever, you see like a prop wash coming out behind you. When you go in reverse, you get prop wash going forward. But then when you go into neutral, a lot of the time you'll still get prop wash. So that means that the transmission isn't getting all the way into neutral. And that can be really bad for the transmission because it's halfway between neutral and reverse. And so that just means that the cables that connect the throttle lever to the transmission lever are probably not calibrated correctly. Yeah, this is, this was really not calibrated at all. And so to be in neutral, this lever is just straight up and down. The way it was positioned was like way off. That's a little scary actually. I'm hoping that there hasn't been any damage done to this transmission. So I couldn't quite shorten the fitting at the end of the cable, enough to get the far hole to meet the lever. But I figured I'd try to see if I could elongate the cable to hopefully get the closer hole to match up with the lever. So you can see here that I had a slight issue with using that inner hole on the fitting. When I tried to push the lever 
into reverse, the fitting could no longer articulate, and so it actually bent the threaded bit of the cable itself. So basically what that means is I think we're gonna have to go into the throttle lever box and shorten this cable in the box. Okay. Oh, dang. Looks like we've got more than just a calibration problem. So it looks like these two cables were chafing on the edge of the tube. And so the sheath of the cable got chafed through and it looks like water got in there and the cable started to corrode. And luckily for us, we're in the United States and there's a West Marine like not very far away. Well, got the cables, but I didn't get them as quickly as I thought. We ended up having to order them from Defender and it took a couple days for them to get here. But even that, just getting cables in a couple days has been great being back in the States. Okay. Oh yeah, I missed it down here. So it has been a couple days since I was working on this project and you know, whenever that happens, whenever you got a couple days after doing something that's kind of complicated, I always worry that I'm gonna forget exactly how everything's supposed to go when I come back to the project. And so what I did, and I'm really glad I did it, is I actually ran string exactly where the cables went. So every little hole that the cables went through, every little bracket that they were attached to, I had this string going through that so that right now that I can't remember at all how these cables were arranged, I can easily make sure that they're back in the right place. Once I realized that I needed to replace the uh, transmission cable, I decided that I might as well just change the throttle cable as well because, you know, you kind of want them to be the same age and if one starts to fail, probably a good idea to switch out the other one. Something that I do every time I take apart a somewhat complicated thing on the boat is take lots of pictures and then annotate those pictures in Evernote. It's a super handy tool and I can go back and look at all the pictures to see exactly how everything goes back together. And really, it, I just err on the side of compiling too much information on the disassembly side so that the reassembly is that much easier. Well, I've basically arrived at having to figure out how to solve the problem that led to the cables chafing in the first place. And I think it's kind of a design flaw with this lever, but if I actually put this lever housing over this tube as much as it is supposed to go, then the cables end up chafing against the rim of the two. The problem right now being that I can't actually fit the housing, you know, in place. It's too high. This needs to go under here. And so I can't shove this down enough without chafing the cables. And so I think if I cut the tube a little bit shorter, then this will get to go under without chafing the cables. You know, first of all, I really don't want to make a modification like that. There's a, always a chance that I'm getting something wrong here and that I'm gonna end up cutting something and then realizing I made a mistake. So I think it'll be okay uh, and it's the only solution I can come up with. I've got everything hooked up. It's working. The cut length of the tube is perfect. The problem now is that after doing everything that I've done, replaced the cables, like realigned everything, this throttle box here, the actual mechanism in there is a bit finicky. 
So for instance, like right now I'm in forward, and if I wanna go back into neutral, I bring it back to neutral, but it's actually in reverse already. It feels and looks like it's in neutral, but I look down at the lever and I'm in reverse already. And so if I wanna go back into neutral, see, now I'm in forward. So to get it just right like that, you kinda, there's like a trick to it. The fact that while I'm up here at the helm station, I can never be 100% sure if we're in neutral or not, that is totally unacceptable. Like that's super, super dangerous. I need to know with 100% certainty that when I bring that lever up, that we're in neutral, that the propeller is not pushing the boat. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking that we've just got to replace this lever box because there's no, I can't fix the inside of this mechanism. It's just, once these things break, I think it's worth just tossing them and getting a new one. Well, I got some bad news. As I was kind of going from reverse to neutral to forward to neutral, all of a sudden it became really easy. And I was like, oh great, problem solved. I could like easily move and I was working perfect. Well, I figured I might as well just double check that that lever was in neutral by taking the cable off and just checking it. And when I did that, the lever just moves completely like free. And normally when that lever is functioning properly, if it's in neutral and you wanna push it into forward, it's kinda hard, there's resistance, and then you kinda go past the resistance and then you can move it. And then when you go back into neutral, it'll kinda like pop into neutral. And then same with going into reverse. So now there's zero resistance. So I spent like the last hour and a half looking at the service manual for the transmission and Long story short, I mean, it's just way above my pay grade. I disassembled and reassembled the uh, transmission on our outboard engine. This transmission is like 10 times more complicated. I'm probably going to contact a mechanic and have them come take a look at it and see what they think. Oh man, it's crazy when, when I get into these projects, it's just, you know, it starts this big and then it gets this big and this big and this big. And right now, I, I have no idea how big it is. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> in my head, I'm like, if we need to get a new transmission, like, can we? And like, if not, then like, do we need to get a new engine? <laughs> That's very overwhelming. It's okay, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> You'll figure it out. Yeah. You always do. We'll figure something out. If not, we could always get into, I don't know, camping or something, right? <laughs> rollerblading? <laughs> rollerblading, yeah. <laughs> Start a rollerblade channel mm -hmm. on YouTube. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so we've got our professional in the house to try to help us out with the transmission problem. This is Chris Johnson. How's everybody doing? <laughs> so yeah, any ideas on what the what problem that? might be, Chris? You know, I typically, I won't jump a conclusion like that. I'd like to try and get in there, take a look, see what we actually have, and then evaluate the whole scenario. Yeah, I hear so, you. You probably stay more open-minded that way. Absolutely, <laughs> and then you don't get yourself cornered into a situation. <laughs> yeah, totally. I agree with your analysis. You know, you, there is no resistance. We should be hearing a clunk noise of that cone clutch shifting into forward and shifting into reverse. This is our shift shaft here. That we're not able to actually rotate and move. We'll call this the, the crescent moon shape. Mm -hmm. um, shifting and compressing the plates. These are the friction plates here. Since we don't have enough room to disassemble this successfully in place, that's why we need to take the transmission out of the boat and then be able to access and have this on a workbench to visually inspect and make any hopeful repairs. All right, so it sounds like our best bet is to just pull the transmission. So he just went off to grab some tools and we're gonna be pulling this bad boy. Yeah. I'm pretty nervous about that. When he first mentioned it, I was like, oh God, <laughs> pull the transmission, like that's a huge deal. I asked him how long that'll take and he's like, oh, I should have it done in like an hour. 
I was like, what? <laughs> I can't believe it. He's already got that thing out. That's nuts. <laughs> and then Desiree started calling Yanmar parts dealers, trying to find people that do repairs to transmissions. Yeah, I called like seven different places and all of them are super backed up and don't do transmission work in the spring or summer because this is like the go time for a lot of the boaters. Um, except there's this one guy um, who everyone goes to for transmission problems, and he's usually really backed up, but he said he's waiting for some parts, and if we drive there within the next couple of days, he can take a look at it. So, it was so awesome. Everything kind of worked out, which like never happens. So I know. Knock on some wood. <laughs> it's a bummer that we had to deal with this in the first place. Ideally, we'd already be on our way south to North Carolina. Yeah. But if something had to go wrong like this it's just amazing that it's that it's that what went wrong is going so right <laughs> well let's not get too ahead of ourselves i'm so excited it's just like i can't believe that we've got this clear path to like fixing this problem yeah. it's never like that yeah. So I do want to say one last thing before we end this episode, and that is that I know it appears like we have a lot more work that we're doing to this boat from the get-go than we thought when we were negotiating for and buying the boat. And I do want to just express sort of the limitations of what a survey is really meant to accomplish. A survey is just never going to be able to tell us all of the problems and the depth of those problems on the boat. The surveyor's only on the boat for one day, right? Probably about eight hours, if you're lucky, maybe more. And they're going to test every single system and let you know if the system's working optimally, if it's working suboptimally, or if it's not working at all. What they're not gonna do is try to investigate the cause of that system not working optimally. And so a great example of that is the fact that our surveyor noticed that the shifting lever at the helm was kind of not shifting very well. And so in the survey, he wrote that the shifting lever was just not functioning optimally. We just assumed that most likely the problem was gonna be somewhat simple. As it turned out, the problem was much bigger, but that's not the fault of the survey. That's just the nature of boat problems. Sometimes you have an issue that looks this big and it's huge. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of the way it is. Mm -hmm. I think in the last episode as well, we had problems with the water system. Well, really, that was just because we weren't familiar with how the water system worked and the propane system, it worked during the survey. So like our surveyor basically turned on the gas, lit the stove, it lit and he's like, great, and then he turned it off. There's just no reasonable way to expect the surveyor to have found that problem simply because on the surface it was working. So we were really happy with uh, both of our surveyors and in fact we forgot to mention them by name in our last video. So thank you so much to Dave Cottle of Distinguished Marine Services and he actually runs out of Stewart, Florida on his boat unwritten timeline and it's also a youtube channel so we'll link to that in the description below but definitely if you need a surveyor and if you're in the florida region area definitely hit dave up he's a great guy mm -hmm. and also a huge thank you to tim leary our rigging surveyor and he's over at yacht rigging services which is based out of portsmouth rhode island so if you're in the area looking for a good rigger definitely give him a call. And to our newest patrons, I am so sorry. I haven't had a chance to give you proper shout outs and thank yous like we usually do at the end of our videos. They're definitely coming in our next week's episode, but I did want to do a special thank you to our newest deckhand level patrons, Bob and Michelle Andrani. Thank you guys so much for supporting our videos and for everyone else, we will see you next week.